All right, now according to the textbook, what's the next step? What do we balance next? Electrons, finally. We add electrons to balance the charge. So we balance the charge using electrons. This is the step that, in my experience, students make the most mistakes on. Sometimes just careless mistakes. So maybe we might have to work this out on paper um, a little bit. Let's start with the easier case. So let's balance this equation. Which side do we need to add the electrons to? To the right side. You agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how many electrons? One, just one. Now, like I said, people tend to make a lot of mistakes about this. Let's double check. On the left-hand side, we have a total charge of 2 plus. And on the right-hand side, we have 3 minus 1, which is 2 plus. So we got this correct. Very good. This one will be more complicated. Again, we might want to work that out on paper. So let's try to figure out how many electrons we need and what side we're going to add them to. The first one, half here. Yeah. Oh. Now we're going to balance the charge in the first half reaction using electrons. Let's work this out on paper if you need to. Sounds good. Now here's what I meant by working this out on paper. Right now, what is the net charge on the left? Before we add the electrons, what's the net charge on the left-hand side of this equation? So it's everything? Yeah. That's, so a net charge means it's everything. That's right. So positive 7? Yeah. OK. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because 1 minus 1 plus 8 is plus 7. And now, um, what's the net charge on the right-hand side? Plus two. Plus two. Yeah, that was pretty easy because there's only one thing with the charge. These are the two numbers that make it much easier now to balance the charges. Um, so which side is two positive? The left. So which side needs to gain some negatives? The left. And how many negatives does it need? Well, I think one of you already mentioned the correct answer. This needs five electrons because seven minus five is two. So when we're figuring out how many electrons to add, it's for the net charge, not just the charge on like the manganese, because that's the only one that has a charge, or at least on the right side of the equation. Like when we were balancing it, we were just worried about the manganese by itself, not necessarily with the whole. Well, yeah, so we need to balance. Like so there's, there's no rule that says the charge on this manganese has to be the same as the charge on this manganese. In fact, that's the whole point of a redox reaction, right? The whole right. point of redox is that this charge is changing. But we do have that the net charge on the left has to be the same as the net charge on the right. Okay. That's, that's, the, that's the scientific law of conservation of charge. Um, that says that the total charge has to be constant, which is really kind of just common sense. For example, suppose that you start a reaction with a charge of positive 2. Well, that charge can't disappear, right? If you start yeah. with positive 2, you have to end up with positive 2. Um, you can't just act, gain some charge or lose some charge because the total charge is conserved. So all this time when we're balancing, we're not saying that the charge on any one species has to be the same as the charge on another species. We're saying that the total charge on the left, well, the total charge of the starting materials has to be equal to the total charge of the products. So remember I was mentioning that you should work this out on paper. But what did I mean by that? I meant that you should figure out what the net charge was on the left and write it down. And figure out what the net charge was on the right and write it down. And then once you've written those down, it's much clearer where we need to put the electrons and how many electrons we need. So we ended up with five electrons here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because what I was doing, and the reason why I got the five electrons is because I was only looking at the manganese. Oh, well, then you probably just got lucky. Yes, yeah, so I just got lucky. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, right, you probably said we, you mean because it was positive seven? Yeah. All right, now remember I mentioned earlier, you actually don't even need to use that to get this right. right. Okay, so um, although, uh, could you, is that uh, pure luck, or is that always going to be? I think you were just lucky that in luck. that case. All right, and now again we've confirmed, uh, well, is this an oxidation or a reduction? Uh, that's a reduction. Good, because things here are gaining these electrons, and this is an oxidation, so these are these two half reactions. I've noticed that some students have a lot of trouble looking at a half reaction and deciding whether it's an oxidation or a reduction. 
Well, if electrons are starting materials, they're being gained, and that's a reduction. And if electrons are products, then that means that it's lost the electron. Yeah, it just seems counterintuitive that reduction would be gaining electrons. Ah, uh, okay, perhaps. <laughs> um, you might remember that mnemonic, Leo the lion goes yeah. gerg, which helps you to remember that gerg, gain of electrons, is reduction. Mm -hmm. All right, so I wrote these steps on the board because these, I think, are the most complicated steps that people are most likely to forget, and they're not set out quite as clearly as they could be in your textbook. Mm -hmm. So now we've completely balanced the half reaction. We've completely balanced the half reactions. By the way, you must do these steps in this order. First, the non-hydrogens and non-oxygens, then the oxygens, then the hydrogens, then the charge. I've noticed that a lot of students try to um, jump the gun and start adding the electrons too soon. We don't add the electrons until we've balanced everything else. So things have to be done in this order. So I'll call these step A, B, C, and D, like they do in the textbook. Well, um, now we're ready to add these together to get the overall reaction. However, we can't add these unless the electrons also balance. The electrons also have to balance. Do the electrons balance yet? No, we have to multiply by 5. That's right. Here we're going to have to multiply this equation by 5. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to multiply both equations, but in this case we only have to multiply this equation. So we'll put down, we're multiplying this by 5. When we do that, what's our new equation going to be? 5 I guess I could add that as a new step E. Step E, after you, in step D, we balanced charge using electrons. Now in step E, we balance the electrons. So everything here has to balance, including the electrons. 